right, Steph from the BMW DIY Guy. My project today is a oil thermometer upgrade from Mosselman Turbo Systems out of the Netherlands. I am really excited to do this. Before I go any further, please make sure to click subscribe and the little alarm bell on, uh, here next to the video so you get updates on all of my upcoming work because I always have upcoming projects, always, and I have some more that are in the pipeline that are really exciting. For this one, we're going to be installing the Mosselman oil thermometer upgrade and I am really excited to get this in my car. You know, as if you followed everything that we've done so far with, with my F32, you've seen all the performance upgrades, all the handling upgrades. And one of the most important things you cannot neglect is the maintenance upgrades in your car, the things that maintain the health of your car. As we put in bigger turbos like you can get from Musselman, as you, as you tune your car and, and really increase the power, keep in mind you're increasing the stress on the motor as well. So all the things that you can do to help maintain the life and longevity of your motor is really, really vital. And I saw this as a crucial piece to help maintain that motor health. The install is really simple. All the tools and everything you're gonna need are linked in the description below, so please go ahead and check that out if you have any questions on how to do that. Let's get out to the garage and get started. All right, so here we are out in the garage now. Because of the setup in my car, I've got a few extra things to take off that you may not, like for example, pulling your cover off, it's just gonna lift, right? But because of my uh, crossbar across here, uh, across the top, I have to take that off first, so I have to take off uh, two 16 millimeter bolts on each side to loosen this up. The other thing you're gonna wanna do is take your intake out as well. Now I've got uh, the CTS Turbo Design intake. So the, how to take this out is a little bit different than what you may experience. The OEM is very similar. You, you release the hose clamp on this side uh, using a screwdriver or a small socket and then just pull it up and it'll come out, the, the, the box itself will come out. The whole thing can come out really easily. So I'm gonna take my intake out. You've gotta unplug your MAF sensor right here. You just depress the little tab and just walk it back carefully. Get that done. Now my intake is almost loose. I've loosened uh, the hose clamp on one end. Like I said, because of my CTS turbo uh, intake, it's a little, maybe a little bit different than what you have. So I'm gonna take all this off and take the cover off. To get all of this out, because we've got to get to three bolts that hold your oil thermometer on right here. And this is really simple work and easy to do for the amount of things that, that you need to take off to put the new one on. So it's more prep than anything else. So I'm going to take my turbo out, it's already, or take my intake out, it's already loosened. I'm going to take my crossbar off and my cover off, and then I'm going to zoom in and I'm going to show what we need to do uh, to, to get the, the OEM oil thermometer off. All right, so as you can see, I've got the cover and the intake out. So there really are only three bolts holding uh, your oil thermometer on. So there's the bolt that holds your feed lines that come up and go down to your oil radiator that are down in front of your passenger side wheel. That's this bolt here, which is a Torx. It's a T30 Torx. And then you've got three bolts here, here, and behind where this connects that are E12 reverse Torx. And that's the only thing that really holds this thing on. Now keep in mind, you've got oil in all of this and it's gonna drip. So I've just taken a bunch of paper towels and I've laid them down over my serpentine belt and I've put them underneath all of this. I actually had this connection off once when I was looking at my, at my oil cooler radiator. So I'm fairly familiar on how this comes out. Now the other thing you may need to do, and, and we'll do it if we have to, is that your hoses are pinned over on this side, kind of off camera right now. There's a, there's a nut and bolt that hold it in place. If need be, we'll pull those. But you know, as, as always when I do these, I try to do the, the least amount of changes to get the work done possible. And this really is simple. So we're going to pull this T30, it's a big long bolt and it backs straight out. And then these hoses will pop down, or these pipes, they're not hoses, will pop down and you're gonna leak a little bit of oil. That'll give you access to the three bolts here, here, and here. So let me get my T30. I'm gonna back this bolt out. I'll show you kind of pulling this hose down and then we're gonna take these E12s off. All right, so the bolt's out. As you can see, it's a big long bolt that feeds down through this. And then this piece will just walk down and away. See, there we go. Leaking a little bit of oil. I wanted to show you live so you could see what it looked like. And leaks a little bit of oil. It's not bad. I've got enough paper towels there to absorb any spillover. So that way we can now get to the rest of this. Now, also when you take this assembly off, it's gonna leak as well. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let 
the oil that I've spilt kind of soak into the paper towels I've got there, and then I'm gonna replace them again. So when I take the assembly off, because I'm gonna lose some oil that's trapped up here where your oil filter is, so I'm gonna lose the oil that's in there as well. And the last thing I wanna do is get it all over my motor. I really like keeping my motor clean, especially with oil, so I'm gonna make sure to do this really carefully so I don't make a mess. So I'm gonna let this clean up. I'm gonna take out the rest of these paper towels, and then we're gonna take these, e, these E12s out to take the assembly off. The bottom E12 is really hard to show on camera. Uh, I just have it on a short, a short socket extension right now so you can just see where, the, where my wrench is sitting. It's just one, two, and three underneath. I'm gonna crack the bottom one first because it's gonna wanna leak out of the bottom, no doubt. I've replaced my paper towels, so I've got a good block of paper towels right here. And you could use a rag or whatever you want. So you just take it and just break this, this open. Just like that, nice and simple. Really not hard. Now the other thing, I hope you bought the gasket set that comes with the replacement. Your gaskets are gonna go here and then on the inside. So I still have the, uh, have the original gaskets here on this connection. And the bolt that we took out, we're going to replace with the new one because of, of the new thermometer housing. It's, it looks different, right? It's a different shape, different setup than the OEM, so it's gotta be a different bolt, but it's the same style of connection where it's gonna come up from underneath and the new bolt's gonna go down through. Okay, so I'm gonna pull both of these and then I'm gonna show you what it looks like next. All right, here you go, real time, what it looks like to take this off. So all three bolts are out, it weeped a little oil out of the bottom. So I'm just gonna take it and gently pull outward, just like that. Now there's a fair amount of oil, as you can see, leaking out there. So I'm gonna take this and set it aside. So it's good that I got enough paper towels in here to soak up any extra. I'll also clean up really, really well. But now you can see really clearly, you can see the previous gasket that's there. We're gonna replace that gasket. I'm gonna clean up all the extra oil that's ripped here so it's nice and clean before we put it in. But then really I'm just in cleanup now because the new one is gonna go straight into place with, this, with three bolts to go back in and then this is gonna be connect and then we're done. As far as leaked oil, really haven't leaked all that much. I mean, as far as, you know, worrying about how much oil you lose, I've seen really only, only a little. So I'm really not all that worried about it. I've also planned this at the same time that I've got an oil change coming up here soon anyway. So I'm not really gonna worry about lost oil level at this point. So I'm gonna clean this up. I'm gonna pull my camera down so you can get a good look of what all this looks like. I'm gonna get the new gasket pressed into place and I wanna show that to you. But as you can see, this really is simple work. It's, taken, it's gonna take longer to explain than it is really for you to do the work. All right, as you can see, all kind of cleaned up. Um, just a little bit of, just a little bit of touch up still left to do. But basically just take the OEM gasket out. I've got a little pick tool. It's gonna reach in here and then just work this gasket out. And you can see it just all fits together like that, really simple. So this extra loop is actually attached. So I'll set that aside. Then I've also got the gaskets here on, on the feed, feed pipes that come up. So I'm gonna take those off too while I'm here, just nice and gentle. The previous work that, I've done, that I did with an oil cooler, I reused those connections. Or, or excuse me, those gaskets. But I, I really, don't, really don't think that's a big deal. But in this case, I definitely recommend replacing the housing gasket and it comes with new feed pipe gaskets anyway. So I would go ahead and just and use them. So I'm gonna do a little bit of remaining cleanup. You can see we've got the new gasket here that we just need to feed into place. It's really not hard. There's only one direction for it to go. It is a pretty thick gasket to fit into these grooves. So I'm gonna start with the small side first like that, and then just feed it in as it goes, just like that. Nice and easy, super simple. And then our two pipes are just round gaskets. They just fit down over the top. You know, and compared to what I had on, my previous ones were flattened out a little bit. So it's probably good to get these replaced. So nice and simple, just like that. My hands are probably in the way for what I'm doing, right? So as you can see, that easy, really that simple. So last thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a little bit of cleanup. I still have a little bit of oil here and there. I don't want any oil left behind. My motor is always clean. I, I 
really try to maintain my motor and keep it clean. So if I do end up with a leak or something, I see it immediately because I'm like, oh, that's new, right? So I'm gonna take a few extra moments here. I'm gonna clean up the little bit of oil that I've got here and there and around. Then we're gonna take the new assembly. I'll show you putting that on. There's those three bolts. Put this back into place and we're done. All right, here's the new assembly. So all three of those E12s are the same size. So it doesn't matter which one goes where. So just take it and fit it into place. Always be careful about dropping bolts. Uh, there's nothing worse than dropping a bolt on a simple job. You know, something that's gonna take you just a few minutes to do, and then you drop a bolt down into your belly pan, and you gotta deal with that hassle. So just be careful not to drop anything. You know, I say that from a place that I've done it. Oh, my head's in the way. Sorry, shadow on what I'm doing. So let me move here a little bit, give you a better view. So we'll just get this into place, and then we'll get the bottom one and all three will be done. And then we'll, we'll torque them down the spec. I'll have the torque for you, or the torque values in just a moment. And then this is gonna come down and, and feed up into the connections here underneath, and that, that top torque bolt will go through. So let me get the torque values for this, and I will speak to that next, and then we're all done. All right, so these bolts really weren't all that tight when I took them out. But you know, you gotta love the Germans. They've got stats for just about everything. So I wanted to make sure to do it right. And any advice I try to give, I try to give the right info. So 16 Newton meters of torque, just like that. I, I love this torque wrench. Um, I used to have one of those manual dial ones that, that I just absolutely hated. And I made a mistake with it once. And, and it was, I, I was really lucky that the mistake I made was easy to fix. So I finally went out of my way and got a better one. So I got this digital, which works really, really well. So your E12s are 16 Newton meters. Your T30 that's gonna go down through here is eight. So I'm going to get this pipe in and just kind of lean it down and then we're gonna feed it back up and in. It's offset a little bit right now, as you can probably see. Just gotta back it towards, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna loosen my clamp here that, that's, that you can see now on frame, so the pipe can slide a little bit. The pipe's gotta slide that way, probably as little as about a sixteenth of an inch. So I'm guessing that's probably a 10 millimeter, if I remember correctly. I'm gonna loosen the clamp here to slide my pipes over. I could probably, yeah, jam it in. There we go. It made it in anyway. All right. So your new housing comes with a new longer bolt than the OEM. So you're not gonna reuse the OEM, so that's not a big deal. And then you can just tighten this down. And like I said, uh, it's gonna be eight Newton meters, which is, not a, which is really not a lot. That is just barely snug, right? So, but I'm still gonna do it right, because as much as I can, I do try to do these things as spec, uh, and that way I don't make a mistake. So it's pretty tight right now. That's just barely snug for hand tight. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna cinch that down. I'm gonna pull all my paper towels out. At that point, we're done. I'm gonna put my cover back on, put your intake back in. Let's talk, talk about that just really, really quickly. Again, I've got an aftermarket intake, so my setup's a little bit different. My hose clamp attaches it to the mounting over here and I get this all set up. I've got my crossbar I've gotta put back on. If you don't have those, it's easy to put the OEM intake back on tighten down your hose clamp on this side, put your cover back on, and you're done. All right, so one last quick walkthrough because I always want to make sure that I don't have anything left over or there's not something unplugged. I've had that happen. You know, you make a simple, you know, you do the work and then you forget to plug a cable back in or something, and it definitely happens. So everything's back together. As you can see, I've got my strut bar back on, covers back on, my MAF sensor's plugged back in, which whether you have OEM or aftermarket intake, you, you wanna plug it back in. For me, my intake is back in and secured, front and rear. All these, like I said, I torqued these bolts down. All in all, it's done. It really is that simple. This is work that you can get done with a few simple tools in about half an hour or less, and probably less in the big scheme of things. So as you can see, really super simple. I'm looking forward to having this in my car. All right, back inside, all the tools put away, fired the car up to make sure that I didn't have any leaks. I checked all of my connections there. Everything looks just fine. I am really excited to get this in my car. You know, this is one of those things that, you know, you're not gonna feel more horsepower, you're not gonna feel more torque, or it's not gonna change your handling. But as the F32 and the, and the N55 motor is something that has so much headroom where we can bring so much power to it, 
you have to make sure that you take those steps as well for proper maintenance and to extend the lifespan and longevity of the motor itself. This is one of those things that's gonna help with that. You know, I'm never gonna feel the difference sitting in the driver's seat, but I will feel the difference over time as, as my motor has a good, healthy lifespan. I've definitely worked on some people's cars that, that want to do performance upgrades where their motor is really not healthy. And I've looked at it and said, are you sure this is something you want to do when you have a leak here or you have a problem there? I, I'm not sure this is a good idea. So this is one of those things that I really saw as vital, uh, you know, money invested to help keep my motor healthy. And I really thank Musselman for making such a fantastic product, such a fantastic product. I mean, it's actually kind of pretty. You know, if you look at it, it's almost too bad it's under the hood. So they are fantastic. Definitely look into this for your car. As you can see, it's super, super simple. So I look forward to seeing you on my next video and thanks so much for watching.